basically it's listed for 39 let's be honest probably talk them down a couple grand i would think but this is nice dude it's uh, I didn't realize it was this modified. Real work wheels. It's got an ETS intercooler. It's already bigger up there, a nice gold one. It's got HKS coilovers with the adjustable top hats so you can dial in the alignment how you like. AWE exhaust, like it is nice, nice. It's only got 9,200 miles on it. It's like new. I mean, some dude has put 10 grand into it and then sold it. Just had a nice little chat with the security guard at the dealership here that's loaning me the car for the day so I can make these videos. Sanderson Ford is very gracious to trust me and let me do this. And the security guard said that this is one of his all-time dream cars. And I think that's part of the allure of something like this is it is a dream car. Wow. Can we heel toe? Yeah, we can heel toe a little bit. When I was in high school and college, an STI was my dream car too. We're talking about 2005, 2007, right in there when a 300 horsepower, all wheel drive manual turbocharged car was ridiculous. I mean, the Ford Mustang at the time just came out with 300 horsepower in 2005. And so to get something like this that had the same power and was just as tunable was incredible. It's not terribly aggressive. I mean, this has got to be the stock clutch. I don't even know if it's tuned or not, if it's on a stock tune or an aftermarket tune, but the power so far is really, really linear. The coilovers are noticeably lower and stiffer than I would expect the stock car to be, but they ride well enough. I mean, this is totally fine. The shifter immediately feels natural. You just can feel exactly where the gear is supposed to be. Even though I've never driven this car before, I haven't had a hard time finding a single gear. Oh yeah, heel and toe, definitely doable in the car. Steering is nice and sharp, has a good amount of weight, but I can actually feel what's happening, which is great. So many cars nowadays suffer from a lack of steering feel. And when steering is one of the few things that you're constantly interacting with in a car, if it doesn't have steering feel, we've got a problem. If anything, I'm surprised that the engine delivery isn't more aggressive. I thought that it would be a really aggressive kind of low down torque feeling like a lot of modern day turbocharged cars are, but so far it's surprisingly linear. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> The power is nice and linear all the way through the rev range. There's not a big glut of torque down low like you might expect, but it also isn't really peaky either to where I don't feel encouraged to necessarily rev this thing out. It doesn't have that peak peak power band that encourages you to be a bit of a hooligan. I mean, it makes all the right sounds. And there is, there is a bit of peak power there at the top of the rev range between five and a half and six there is just one last little extra kick of power over and above what was happening before. So I don't want to overlook that, but the car feels like it needs another 50 or 80 horsepower, even from what it is. One of the first things I notice whenever I get in here in the STI is that the seats are nice and supportive, but for me, I'm 6'5", they're just too high. and My knee is already up into the steering wheel. Granted, I can push the steering wheel back a bit, but still, my knee is going to contact the wheel, so that's a little bit of a downer. Some nice red contrasting seat belts are cool. The steering wheel Alcantara feels really nice. Let's give it a little bit of a rev. Oh, those Subaru noises. So why is this car still so alluring? What is it that captures our imagination about this? I'd say the first part of that is the fact that you can't get a new STI as of right now. Will Subaru bring it back at some point in the future? I don't know what to say for sure. But as of today, the highest trim level, highest performance spec you can get from a Subaru is a WRX TR. And the surface level specs of the TR are pretty similar to this car. Not that much of a difference in terms of power or performance in general, but the people that know, know that this transmission should be a bit stronger than a standard WRX. The engine should be stronger than a base WRX. So as a platform to build on, an STI is definitely a stronger starting point. But I think for most of us, the real allure to a car like this is nostalgia. People like me had this as a dream car when we were younger and now might actually be able to afford it. 
Other people were rally fans and watched Subaru dominate the WRC. And so to have a piece of that in your life as your everyday driver feels really special. And this is a nicer place to sit than a standard WRX2. It feels special with the steering wheel and the seats and the overall trim of this car just feels a bit nicer than a base level WRX, regardless of the changes you might've made to it or the performance you could have added. Speaking of nostalgia, this is a place that's full of nostalgia. This whole draw, this whole appeal is strictly based on nostalgia. I'm at a drive-in movie theater in Glendale, Arizona, and there's no reason to come here when you could stay home and have probably a better experience overall than coming out and sitting in your car and being in a parking lot with a bunch of other people. Why would I choose to squint at some subpar screen when I could be in a movie theater and see everything in 4K with the best surround sound possible? Why would I be uncomfortable out here in the outdoors when I could be comfortable inside a theater? These are the kind of illogical choices that we make in life because it's an emotional nostalgic draw that pulls us towards objects like this and places like this logically based on the price of somewhere between thirty five and forty five thousand dollars why would you settle for a sedan that's a little two boy racery for the amount of performance it actually gives you it's only 300 horsepower. Yeah, it's tunable, but there's a lot of other options out there that are either more luxurious or faster. So an STI then is kind of a weird middle ground between the boy racer of yesteryear and the performance car of today. If your goal is to go as fast as possible, you shouldn't buy this car. But if you want the style of cool work wheels and the ethos of a rally car because you've got this turbocharged flat four with the big intercooler and the loud exhaust and it makes all the right burbly sounds, then there's really no replacement for this. And because Subaru has stopped selling the STI, there's literally no replacement for this. And the argument could be made for something like the GR Corolla to replace this and the Mitsubishi Evo in that world of like wannabe rally racers, the turbocharged Japanese four-wheel drive manual transmission car that's really out here just to be fun. For us, it's not about max performance, it's about maximum fun. But part of the beauty and the allure to a vehicle like this, as aggressive as it wants to be, the turbocharged sounds, the rumbly exhaust note, the quick shifting manual transmission, it still functions like a real car. Like I've got a ton of camera gear back here, you could totally put kids or friends or whatever in the back seat. And so the everyday usability of this is still so much better than something like a Porsche Cayman that you could get for similar money. Yeah, maybe that's a more purist driving tool, but it doesn't function as an everyday car. This does. In the end, the Subaru STI isn't about ultimate performance or lap times, and it's really not even about the most perfect driver engagement and maximum fun. It's about making your dreams come true. Remembering when you were a 10 or 15 year old boy and seeing those kinds of cars fly around corners in Sweden or on some other rally stage and thinking, man, that would be the ultimate to be able to own and drive something like that. Realizing that dream and getting to live with that car that you've pined after for your whole life is the draw. And of course, most EVs are gonna be way faster, but pure performance doesn't have any story and emotion and nostalgia behind it. That's the one thing that the SCI will beat most other cars in every day of the week. I also feel very driven by nostalgia and by remembering the vehicles that I wanted when I was younger. And so there's a chance that I also could have bought a turbocharged manual four-door all-wheel drive pseudo rally car. And so I'll be taking notes on how the STI drives and I'll be comparing that to my next car in future videos. Stay subscribed.